Hey, good morning, Misfits. It is the day after my birthday. <laughs> Happy Friday. It is June 19th, uh, episode four, 484. I hope everybody's doing amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all my birth. Is what deserves your attention is because there's a lot of things out there that can pull it. There's a lot of things out there that can pull it. And you can be pulled, you can be pulled off of your destiny. You can be pulled off of your path. It might be the new way to go. It might be the, just the right thing that, that should draw you in, that it should draw you off your path, your path of procrastination, your path of uh, lostness. It, it might put you onto the path of, of, of persistence and get you going into a new direction. You might need a new direction. So what is, what is the part of you that pulls your direction? And so, so I was, somebody had their hand up. I, I think she's still here. So um, last night I got pulled and it caused me to go do my live because yesterday was a long day for me. I say a long day. There was a lot of energy and friends and conversations and maybe a couple of uh, adult beverages were involved. But last night I, I jumped onto um, Instagram and there was Corinne and uh, Moshe and they were doing a live together. And that conversation inspired me uh, as I was watching them to hear them. And so I went and did a live and I'm like, oh, if I click the live button, who's going to be around, right? So this, this, is what's, this is what's going through my head. You guys kind of have the behind the, you're kind of sitting in the chair today. I said, what's, what, what's going through my head? I, I do a live. All right, I'll, I'll go on and I'll say thank you to everybody for the birthday wishes and for all of the comments and the, 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 the DMs that I got in IG. And it wound up being a 45 minute, pretty, pretty intense, great questions from, from all of you, from amazing souls. And it drew my attention and it got me fired up and it got me so fired up. My, the, the, my, my pillow didn't get my attention last night. So I didn't plan on staying up all night. I didn't plan on working all night. But because of watching those two souls have a conversation together to see their smiles, it inspired me. It drew my attention. Now, did I need to get some stuff done? Yes. But I might not have been able to do it had I not seen their video, had I not seen their live and them interacting. So I see Cor Corinne has her hand up. Good morning, Corinne. <laughs> Good morning, Sean. Good morning. How are you, my love? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Thank you so much like for getting on the live. Because when I saw you, I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I'm on. Okay. Like, I'm on. I'm ready. <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> um, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And I just, like, I, I wanted to, like, share that I was inspired. Like, when I... Because I, I shared about um, a, um, I guess it's a story or whatever, but it happened and it was a small thing. And I went to the store and when I went to the store, um, I'm just going to share the story real quick. I went to, yeah, I went to the store and um, I was not happy. I didn't have a, a, a good like little morning. So I kind of like I got off, but I was like, okay, I'm just going to go and um, pick up some stuff and feel better. So when I want to feel better, I go to my substance to feel better. And that substance um, that I chose was weed. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna pick up this substance and then I'm gonna go pick up oatmeal because oatmeal and weed make me feel better. Um, and so I was like, okay, I picked it up and I was like, I went to the store to go get the oatmeal and um, I forgot my mask. So I'm in there with a, a beanie, like oh, a beanie, like on my face, like holding a beanie on my face. Cause I'm like, oh my God, I forgot my beanie, I forgot my mask. So whatever, I get in the store and this lady, I put my, my beanie down for a second to pick up my oatmeal and my milk. And the, some lady like comes out of nowhere and she, like, she yells at me, she's like, put your mask back on. And I'm like, okay, all right, 
okay, put it back on. And then um, I go to check out and the same lady happens to be in front of me, um, in front of me in the checkout thing. And I get too close and she yells at me and she says, get back, you, you're, too, you're too close, you're too close to me, you're too close. Ma'am, you're too close. And I'm like, okay, all right, all right. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a walk. I'm gonna take a walk. And so I take a, a lap around the, the, little, um, the little aisle, you know, to wait for her to cash out. Um, and um, the cashier follows me and she says, do you want a mask? And I put my little beanie down, I'm like, please. <laughs> And I get my little, I put my mask on and then I, I you know, circle back around to the same cashier and um, she, to the same cashier and she looks at me and I was like, you know, flustered at this point, um, you know, and she looks at me, she's like, how are you? And I'm like, I'm, I'm frustrated. And she says, we shall inherit the earth. And I say, I know but I'm frustrated and she, <laughs> and she says, you are beautiful. You are perfect as you are and you are exactly where you need to be. And I say, I'm less frustrated now. So thank you. <laughs> and um, and she comes out from around the corner and she gives me a hug. Like in the store, in the middle of the store, this lady gives me this biggest hug you've ever seen after I had just gotten yelled at by the previous woman, you know, for, you know, being too close to check out. She gives me a hug and she says, we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. And like I, I immediately after that I um, I grabbed my oatmeal and I threw away my weed and I um, I was fine like I didn't need anything I didn't need anything but um, to start my day at that point and I started it and it was an incredible day with incredible successes and it was absolutely like amazing so is it possible and I heard Rhonda saying this, we've all, we've said this, we've heard this, maybe, just maybe, your moment yesterday, you gave, you were the miracle for that woman who gave you the hug. See, sometimes we, we believe we have to be, we've got to be this amazing super soul to be the miracle for somebody. Maybe sometimes our frustration, maybe we're the one that because you didn't respond in a way, you didn't react in a way with the woman who said, get back. And, and you decided to, to, to take a step and you decided to, to walk it, it off, if you will. You gave that, up, that woman who was there, the, the, the checkout, the chance for, to be the miracle for you. But maybe you were the miracle for her. She was needing somebody to love. So your attention was drawn not to joy, but to a little less than joy for maybe somebody who, who didn't know how to give it, who didn't know how to, didn't know where she could put her joy, where didn't know, didn't know if there was anybody she could be the joy for. So maybe, just maybe, that was the reason for you to be the miracle yesterday. Because had that not happened, you might not have done the live with Moshe and that live might not have happened with me. And then I wouldn't have seen you. And then I might not have spent 45 minutes on IG answering messages from people I hadn't met before and people's lives changing. So the fact that you, you were able to stand through, stand through and move through a moment of frustration gave me the chance to work all night long. We are all connected. We are all intertwined. Whether we see it or not, whether we're, whether we're physically there or not. And the fact that she gave you a hug 
I got to say yesterday when Rhonda was here and I stood up and gave her a hug, that's the first real hug, right? Because everybody else is bumping elbows and fists and doing whatever. And, <laughs> and so it was, it felt good. And then I met somebody for the first time, somebody else who's, who's part of the team, part of the organization came up. Rhonda hadn't seen him in a while. First time I met him. And it was, it was, it was amazing. It was like, it was normal just to give him a hug because I'm a hugger. If you guys haven't figured that out, but I know you probably figured that out. My point is this, all of that to say, all of those things that you went through impacted around the world. I, there's no telling what happened with Moshe. Mm. Mm. This is, this is the, this is the attraction that you have and how your attention to breathe into the moment because you gave that you who knows maybe the woman who said get back who kept telling you get your mask on maybe it maybe you were probably the miracle for her because guess what she got to do she get to she got to go home all day and complain about you <laughs> not, to, not having your mask and this young girl she kept this that and the other and and that gave her a reason to, to, to not get lost someplace else. Mm. Mm. Right? Mm. So it, the fun thing is that I get to do is I get to Wayne Dyer stuff all the time. I get to change the way we look at things. So I look at things differently. So you're amazing, Corinne. I love you. I love you. And can I just say that, um, it's like to even get to the point of noticing that that was a thing, you know, that that was actually a moment that was important versus just something else in the world was the result of like meditations with Moshe and this call, you know, like I had to get to a higher vibration to be able to see that there's something bigger than me even happening within this. And like, you just confirmed everything that I was like, wait a minute. It's not about me. <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm not the only one around. <laughs> like, it was just amazing. So I just wanted to say that. And also, um, I'm about to purchase the secret sauce. Um, is there a discount code? Um, yes. Sean secret code. Sean secret code is the code. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's not Sean's. It's, so it's Sean singular. Sean secret, Sean secret code. code. Bless. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Thank you. Love you. I love you. Here's and and I, I'll just touch on this one more time because we could go into infinitum on, on this particular scenario. But here's this lady's energy. Here's Corinne in line, and here and here's the checkout woman. She snaps this way. It stops. It doesn't go back. It it it's it, the energy goes this way and it goes for a walk. And in that walk of dissipation, it stopped this energy because the, even the checkout person thought, heard it, and felt that she, could have, she couldn't have said anything to this woman because there's no, there's no way you're going to talk her off the fence. And she, didn't, she couldn't say anything to you because it would have agitated her. So you took that energy and you turned it in like everything that has to happen. When you step on the gas pedal and you go to drive the car, the car has to move, otherwise mm. the, the, the car burns up. Mm. So you took that energy and you walked it off. Mm. You walked it off enough for this woman to say, mm. I get to go take care of her. Mm. Mm. You got to go take care of you, and then you got to do everything, and you put the weed down and you just got the oatmeal. So now your body's healthier. So that woman who snapped at you gave you a chance to take care of yourself better. So the next time you see her, you can tell her, thank you. She's like, what do you mean, thank you? Where's your mask? <laughs> All you need to say is thank you. And then, so you're healthier. And, because, and you didn't even buy. And the cashier wasn't worried about you buying whatever else it is you needed to buy. She just needed to, to buy some time with you. She could give you a hug. And who knows, maybe she went home and didn't have an argument with a loved one in their house. Do you see how 600 generations, when I say 
I'm here to leave a legacy of 600 generations, how you just impacted that yesterday? <laughs> at the grocery store. At the grocery store. And getting, and getting snapped at, you, you impacted 600 generations. That's why, that's why, this is, this is why, as I sit and look at things and when things, everybody else go, oh my God, it's gone to hell in a handbasket. I go, we haven't even started. We haven't even started. <laughs> There's no hell in a handbasket. This is, I'm here for 600 generations, 2,400 years. A lady snapping at me in a mask is going to slow me down? Not a chance. Um, oh thank you for explaining that energy the energy because i'm looking at like people you know i'm looking at her like she's just some lady that you know needs you know to get laid you know but no there's energy <laughs> that needs you know there's more energy than that you know it's like wow. that could very well be the case <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> i can't help her with that <laughs> I can maybe <laughs> make it a little easier for it to happen. Um, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but that, but that's just how, that's how energy moves around. And maybe that, maybe that was the rele enough release for her to walk out of the place and, and her to just shake it off and go, okay, I, I'm, I'm done telling everybody to be safe. <laughs> We don't know. All we know is what your story is. Yeah. And then, and then, and then you get to come on this morning. You get up at 4.30 in the morning. You get to come on this morning and tell that story and everybody's smiling and laughing and going how amazing you are. So you responding, not reacting to a mask conversation inspires 63 people. Y'all see why we have to show up? I don't care where we show up, but when we show up, we have to show up as us. Not as somebody who, who tells us who we are. Not as somebody who tells us what we need to do. Yeah, you are, quote, breaking the rules, right? With, with your little beanie. But you showed up and then, and now all of a sudden it showed up here and somebody may tell this story again today. So now you're not even part of the story. You're already generationally changing stuff. And that happens because one day you decide to get on some crazy guy's call from Dallas, Texas. Too much. <laughs> all of this is traceable. In, in, in the industrial world, in the nuclear world, so I've worked inside of nuclear facilities. What? Farm boy from Ohio? Yeah, you'd be surprised some of the things I've done in this world. So in, in the nuclear world, there's something called cradle to grave. And anything that moves into that plant or onto the property of a nuclear facility, they got to know how it was born, manufactured, where it was created, everything from it, all the way to where it's stored and how long it's going to be stored. So it's called cradle to grave. We have the same thing from cradle to grave. Could you imagine if we had to track all of the way our energies went? All of the different places our stories went? Because when we go to the grave, our stories are still out there. And if we had to track the influence, right? If, if, if you go to, to my IG page, I talk about the Stoics, Rumi and and Seneca and Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius. Their stories are still being tracked 2,500 years later. Jim Rohn's stories, he's now passed 11 years. All these things, all of these stories that we have, the Corinne stories that from June 18th, 2020. <laughs> what deserves our attention? Us. Us. We deserve our attention. We deserve our attention. And when we deserve our attention, we have a responsibility, the ability to respond. And that was your responsibility yesterday. 
and Corinne's going, I was just going to tell a story about a mask and I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Thank you, Corinne. I love you. I appreciate you. Let's go to Hotlanta. Let's go coast to coast. Hello, Latoya. Well, hello there, Sean. You look fabulous, by the way. How y'all look doing? I look younger. <laughs> I know. I'm like, oh my gosh. Hey, I look younger too because I've been on these calls. So, hey, you know. <laughs> I love you. Yes, love you as well. Sean, um, I had an aha moment yesterday yeah you know i had the aha moment like pretty, i was just gonna say latoya pretty. you're like you're gonna are you sure you got enough aha moments left yeah you got i know i know right like, i think i got two left two <laughs> remaining it's <laughs> like the game you know you gotta put two in and get some more right so um i had an aha moment so it, it was it was this guy i used to date uh-oh he's like, he straight yeah yeah okay <laughs> He straight ghosted me. Like, I ain't know what happened, but it, it came to a point that it, it, he'd be like, oh, I was busy on his business. At, at first, I kind of like, you know, okay, I understand. But then, you know, the intuition was like, no. You know, even with just five minutes, he could have just called to say hello, you know? And, I, and, and he reached out to me after like three months. He's like, hey, how you doing? I haven't heard from you. I said, well, uh, it started with you, you know, and, and they're like, well, you know, I'd be busy and this, this, this. And, and, and I, I was kind of like confused, but then at the same sense, I didn't, I didn't like apologize, you know, you know how like some women, when they feel like they hurt someone, whether they did it unintentionally or not, whether they're aware, they feel like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, I used to be one of like, oh my gosh, I didn't mean to blah, 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 how can I make it better? And here I am lowering my standards, but I didn't. You know, I was like, you know, <laughs> bruh, <laughs> it, like, I, I was so done when you ghost me, like, the fifth time, I'm being honest with you, Sean, when he ghosted me the fifth time, it was like, that's it, I'm good. I, I'm gonna just focus on your charts, I'm focused on myself, just, you know, self-development, and, and, and it just be, you know, strengthen myself being a better me and Shauna I believe I just um elevated <laughs> like I didn't feel I had to be addicted to someone's approval of me like cause he made like I ghosted to him but I put it out there and he was like oh well you know you know I'll be busy and I'm just like well we all have 24 hours in a day because five minutes but I didn't bring that to the surface because it was like that'll be a waste of energy just out there you know because some people when they see themselves you know they justify certain things and uh i know I, it's just some things that don't deserve my time that that was not one of them i told him have a great life and uh <laughs> i you know it, it was great you know for the moment but bro thank you a lot for showing who you truly are <laughs> and again here's the thing Two, so two examples, Corinne's story, your story. Yes. We're, this happens all the time. Yes. It's when, it's when our emotion gets drawn into it, right? We can think about whether somebody walks in front of us in the car at the stoplight. Do they take a little longer walking across the crosswalk? Do they, do they not hold the door open for us? Do they, all, a thousand and one things. But the second, but the, but the second that attention goes from being in a distraction to an attraction to where we focus on whether we, we, we pay attention to the woman who's snapping. Here's the thing with those situations like that. Here's something that runs through my head. If the woman in front of me snapped and said, you need to put your mask on. I breathe and I say, I'm glad it stopped with me. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'll put my shirt up and I'll do this. Right. Cause it's, it's anyway. So, and I'll, and I'll be there like this and I'll go, okay, I, I apologize. And you're like, well, what am I apologizing for? Blah, blah, blah. We don't need stupid masks and this, that, and the other. Did you read the 17 doctor reports that say this? Did you read the 18? And you can get into a debate. Is it worth your energy mm -hmm. 
to try to help somebody out of the hole who doesn't want to, who doesn't want to get out of the hole. No. And so the fact that you took, you took, and again, ladies, hear me. The fact that you took control of your own space and time and said, this is not worthy of me. That's a, I mean, I know it, listen, it's easy to say, it's easy for me to sit here in, in Dallas, Texas and, and say to Corinne, yes, but Corinne, maybe you shouldn't have responded that way. I, I, we didn't have that conversation because the way she responded was she went and walked it off. You decided to just not be a ghost to yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Funny how this, that, that title today is, is, again, now, here's the question. So did my title draw all of these conversations? I don't believe that's the case. I believe it might have made them easier to have a conversation about, right? Because energy draws like energy. So as we sit here and we, and we start to look at the way that yesterday, because yesterday, so here's the thing. Yesterday when Pink Robe Lady... Now, you know, so we're all good Christians, right? And you're not supposed to lie. <laughs> so, so somebody says to me yesterday, hey, um, I've got some potential meetings at 930. Uh, can you do meetings at 930 or 10? This was yesterday. She was asking me on Wednesday for Thursday. I said, oh, yeah, I can do 930. Yeah. I said, all right, let's sit down. We'll do some one-on-ones right? We'll do some Zooms with some of the leaders and we'll go over their business plan, blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay, cool, 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 cool. And then having conversations with my bride, having, getting the, the, the behind the scenes set up, conversations with some of you all on the call. Um, <laughs> and so my attention was drawn here, but then all of a sudden my attention got instantly changed when somebody shows up in your office and is sitting in the chair. Right. That wasn't on my schedule. Now, well, it's your birthday. You should be happy. How many times do you know when, when you go to show up to do something nice for people, they lose their, their shite and they go <laughs> berserk. They don't like for when the plans change. Well, right. that might have been me yesterday and how big of a jerk would I have been? So I say all of that to say, when you when you roll with the punches the punches don't hurt no and not even a tap on the shoulder it's like block <laughs> you become muhammad ali float like a butterfly sting like a bee you nothing even hurts you i mean it doesn't even hit you and then we go yesterday and then we go to breakfast we go to lunch and we meet this other amazing soul who she hasn't seen in a <coughs> a coon's age and a handful of years and, and, and we have a conversation and he's hysterical. And, and here's the funny thing, follow this. He shows up, has a conversation, is brand new in our business. And all of a sudden yesterday, I think puts two or three people in the business yesterday only because Somebody cared enough to take about, to, to come spend, drive an hour and 10 minutes in traffic to come see me. So there's a part of me, my ego says, I'm not worthy of that. Why would you do that? You, your whole family, you brought your whole family. Why would you do that? I'm, I'm, I don't deserve that. Now I could have sat here and going, but, but you didn't need to do that. No. So you, have, you take in the joy, you take in whatever shows up. And because that relationship happened and we got to spend time together and then go to breakfast and, and he shows up and we're taking care of us, right? My family, the Parker family and the Murphy family are taking care of each other and we're having fun. And this other energy jumps in and gets all excited. <coughs> he leaves. And because of that influence, he enrolls three new people. Like back to back to back. And now oh. he's fired up. And it's all because every one of you jumped on this call a week ago, a month ago, two months ago. Because you all let me pour into you. You all pour into me. You all help me get better. The daily awakening. 
and it allows me to have a chance to express sometimes my frustration, to express my joy, to be in a place to where I get to <clears throat> rinse, wash, and repeat. Are we, are we going tomorrow today? Later. So. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <My time. laughs> oh, oh, good. <laughs> So I, I have one more thing, Sean. Ooh, Latoya. I want to truly thank you for uh, encouraging me when my brother passed. I really want to thank you because the, leader, the leadership is more than just being part of someone's business, right? It's more like, to me, at times of death, that really showed the value of who you truly are, you know? I get it. People be like, you know, I send my condolences of deepest sympathy. But sometimes it takes a little bit more than that, you know. And, and when you just open up that layer and and really went in depth with, you know, just having better understand and, and, and to keep me focused and um, um, encouraged. And I just want to truly thank you for that. And I look at you completely. I, I look at you more on an alignment level now, you know, and, and, and I just want to thank you so much for that. Uh, and that really meant a lot to me. I, <laughs> I wish I took a screenshot of that. <laughs> go ahead. Here you go. This is my hug for no, you. No. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I'm posting on Instagram. <laughs> They're like, oh my God, they don't call us like this, man. Like, oh exactly. God, I don't know. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. <laughs> and Latoya, so here, so so here's the compliment back. I, I received that compliment. That's something I work very hard to do to 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 be present, to be in the moment. Here's the other thing. In that moment of stress, in that moment of sheer just absolute panic that you were in the part of you that was able to hear that see there's no way leaders who think they're leading who are by themselves are just people out for a walk they're not leaders and because of because of you allowing me and allowing yourself to hear the messages from us, to hear the messages from me in those moments, that part of you allowed yourself to walk through that. You could, I could have said the same things and you chose not to do that. Your attention was someplace else. So yes, it is a symbiotic relationship. It is not a parasitic relationship where it's take, 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 take. There's a part of you that said, I want to get through this. I need to go through this. My, my psyche, I have to go through this. I get to go through this. But I also get to listen to the words of somebody who I hope is going to guide me in the, in the way that serves me. Because it seems that way before. Because listen, we can all, we can all build businesses when everything's going hunky-dory and everything's going <laughs> right. right? Green That's right up on the grass. Everything's great. <laughs> But it's, but it's when, we, when we can fall in love with each other, when those moments of, of truly the wheels fall off and the, we're, all, we're, we're all sliding and the, there's no sense putting the brakes on because the car's upside down already. Those are moments where we can, we can really fall in love with each other. And so you gave me a chance to fall in love with you a way I never thought possible either. So thank you for that. You're welcome. My pleasure as well. You all have a wonderful day. All right, Latoya. All right. Let's go to Alicia. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Sean. How are you? Outstanding. How are you? Uh, we'll dive into that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so yesterday I was on the call and uh, you said something to Daniela that really hit. You said... Um, she was arguing with Mateo and you said there are some mothers who have a car seat that are that's empty because they don't have their child and um I didn't think I had a miscarriage and my child would have been two this year and um 
So when you said that, it, it really hit, and we were trying to get pregnant and have a child, and then after it not working for three months, I just decided, hey, you know what, I, we're just going to take a break right now, and um, see what's going to happen. Just take a break. Let's stop the stress and everything. And when you said that, it just made me realize that I, I hadn't healed from the last one. Although so much time had passed and I thought I had. And uh, I hadn't. I hadn't. So is, is part of the healing process, is it not? the recognition that you had yesterday is that not a huge step that you just took yesterday yeah but i didn't real i thought i was healed from it right and then yesterday when you said that i i realized i wasn't but and now, maybe so go ahead go ahead go ahead and maybe and maybe that's why i decided after three times that we weren't even trying before right and it, it just happened and um then now we're trying and it's, it's not happening so now that you've had this conversation and I'm not saying you're healed, but there's a whole new level of, of understanding to, to where you can provide some space to heal that scar, to let that, that scar actually happen now to where it yeah. was still the open wound so that maybe it can heal because the, the memory isn't going to go away. It's, right. it's thinking that it had gone away that makes it even, that makes it hurt, but it, it, it won't go away. I, I, listen, I can't even begin to imagine the story that somebody has to say, or the amount of the feeling of lack or the feeling of not good enough, or can't even, I can't even begin to put into words that dialogue. I can tell you from this perspective, I had a younger brother. He lived for 14 hours. Mm. My mom never told me about it till I was probably 14, 15. His name was William. Mm. And, but once I heard that, my, the way I saw my mom changed. Up until that moment, the way I saw my mom, my mom changed. And it, and it changes again now. See, in it's been 15 years. It's got to be 16 years, and probably at least 15 years that I've even mentioned his name. So you having this conversation with me today might be a, might be a reason for me to have a conversation with Mason to let him know about something like that. I don't know. But if what Corinne did and what, what LaToya did and what you're sharing with us now, there's, there's, a, there's somebody, there's a bigger story that you telling your story right now is helping somebody else on this call. I hope, I hope. And so I know that I can speak to somebody who was always, was told they, should, they couldn't have a child RBP. Yeah, I was, I was perked up. You, um, as soon as you started talking and you mentioned children, I went and got my clippers and started working on my blackberry plants because I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta dissipate some of these thoughts and feelings that are coming to mind. Um, at 15, I was told I'd never have a child, and <clears throat> it was, it was shocking and devastating. Mm -hmm. We were just huge into having lots of family family was really big to us so um 
you couple that with that feeling of always being the black sheep, never having a place. And then you slap something like that on top of that. And um, that's a hard, I'm fighting so many emotions back right now. <laughs> that's a hard place to be. And I was hearing you. Because when your body begins to prepare to bring life to this earth, unless you've ever brought life to this earth, you can't understand that. You can, you can sympathize with the thoughts of what it might feel like. But when I heard your heart and I heard your body prepared for that baby, and for whatever reason, the time for that baby was not that time. And that baby needed to go back to heaven or, or however you say that in your language and in your thoughts. That's a challenging place for a woman. And then you put, you couple that with all the physiological things that change in your body to adapt, to allow your body to bring life to this earth. That's a hard place to be. One thing I heard, and I, I do this to myself a lot, is I heard when you were talking, you kept saying we were, we were trying and, you know, we had, to, we had to say we had to quit. We hear that in our speech a lot. <clears throat> and I think that's the way we use words to try to help the heart with its, with its emotions. And we'll use the words like we're trying. And then you said we, we're going to take a break. When, in all honesty, when you take a break and you focus on just being there for yourself and your husband, isn't that when everybody always goes, oh, we quit trying and all of a sudden we got pregnant? Isn't that when things begin to happen? And it's funny because I hear another twist in this because every time I said, oh, they said I can't have children, I can't have children. When I quit saying anything about not having children and through the help of natural medicine with that, I now have an eight-year-old little girl. Mm -hmm. And it's in that moment when we stop seeing all the roadblocks and we lay that down and we just exist and take care of ourselves and what's present right there right now you and your partner it's in those moments that we are becoming the most prepared for any type of change to occur in our life and i don't say it flippantly by all means i know I know the emotions that come to a woman when someone, when another woman says something about children or childbirth or things like that. I remember those moments so well. <laughs> I remember that so many moments where I just wanted to pop a woman in her head or, I, you know, a pregnant woman walks by and she's smoking and I just want to tackle her like an NFL linebacker and just, you know, beat her down and be like, who are you? I get it. So I don't want you to think I'm taking this conversation lightly at all. <clears throat> However, it's in that moment that you stop focusing on the child and begin to focus on you and your partner, that the true essence of that child can actually appear. And if it's that moment in time and space for God to allow that child to come from heaven to your house, then it'll all come together. And if it's not, then what harm has occurred for you to be present that exact moment with, for yourself and for your partner? I hope that's coming out right. It sounds a little... Go ahead. You can talk. No, I mean, I think you're right. I, I mean, I don't... I think you're right in everything that you said. I mean, for so long, it's just been about the miscarriage and the loss and then by I thought we were past that and then um and then coming back to that as in like we're trying again we're gonna try 
try for another one and hopefully everything helps. And then when I had my, my first one, um, the doctor said, well, have you ever thought about freezing your eggs? You're not getting any younger. Oh, and <laughs> no. So, so let me stop that train of thinking because that's a train wreck waiting for a place to happen. So let's flip the script and I'm going to go in a total different direction. And, um, <laughs> but I really feel like this is what I'm hearing. Can you, and this is a question you probably make you roll your eyes. Can you just really super enjoy the moments of trying? Can you just enjoy all the practice it takes to get a child conceived? <laughs> yeah. Can you really just be like, you know what? What can, and pardon me guys, I'm sorry. What can I wear tonight to make maybe the night, tonight's the night. What can I do to make it so much fun that all I'm focused on is what it feels like to be with him? Mm -hmm. What can I do tonight to make it so memorable that if this chooses to be the night, boy, do we got a story. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's going to be a good one when they get old enough to hear this story. Yeah. Can, you, can you flip the script to make it so enjoyable that, that when you get to tell this story, and if it is not the timing, man, what a heck of a story you got to tell your girlfriend. Y'all will <laughs> not believe what like, last night was like, let me tell you. <laughs> I mean, that's the ultimate flip the script and steal the joy back and put it into your hands. That's the ultimate moment. Mm -hmm. That's the moment of being so present right now that you're not worried about the future. There's nothing worse Sorry, this is just going to get raw. There's nothing worse than having sex with your partner and worrying about the outcome. You can't enjoy your body being loved. Mm -hmm. You can't. All you're worried about is, oh, did it happen? Oh, wait, did it happen? Oh, wait, did it happen? You can't enjoy that. But there is something so supernaturally amazing when you're so present with your partner at that moment and you don't care what an outcome is that you actually get to enjoy your body the way God created you to enjoy your body and there's nothing wrong with that and y'all know that's crazy from a girl living in the bible belt who's told you know you never say the sex word Ooh. so you know that's crazy but can you not do that for yourself can you not you're so focused on the outcome <clears throat> And I don't mean to equate making a baby and, and network marketing, but I kind of am. You're so focused on the outcome, you can't enjoy the process. You're so focused on getting your team built or getting this baby here, you can't enjoy the process. When y'all, I don't know about y'all, most of the fun's in the process. Mm -hmm. Most of the fun's in the warm up and the follow through. They say follow through is like gold. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of is, y'all, if you think of it like this. So I, I am pushing your mind to get out of where society says worry, mourn, concern, fear. Doctors get to tell you what your body can and cannot do when doctors practice medicine. We've got to keep that word practice. So right Jessica miracles do happen the miracle of your body and your partner's body fitting together so perfectly that's a flipping miracle so why can't you rejoice in that and enjoy that and I'm, I'm not I hope I don't come across preaching to you I really want you to see the joy that you have a a partner in your life that is not only joining you, but is joining you physically mm -hmm. and mentally for the same goal. No, you're helping me see a different side of it. Good, of the, good. The outcome that I haven't been able to enjoy the, the process where it's- Exactly. 
I'm ovulating. Now's the time. Now's our window. <laughs> tick tock, tick tock, let's go. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Well, and there's one thing you need to know when you're ovulating is that's when you're like, hey, come on, girl. Come on, dude. Let's go. Let's go. Time is now. So take that moment and have fun with it. Yeah. That, you know, that is, that's kind of the <clears throat> fun part of the race, so to speak. And how can we make it fun? And what kind of story is it going to, are we going to end up with? And what, the, what, are, what are the details going to be like? This is going to be exciting. Where is this going to end up happening? There's a fun one. There's a fun question for you. <laughs> and begin to sit in that giggle that I hear in your voice that's so attractive and that so sucks me in. Every time I hear you giggle, I stop for a minute. You make me stop walking around. I'm walking around the pasture, working on the blackberries, all that kind of stuff. I stop for a minute because you giggle. And that's a cool thing to hear. And it's, it's in that giggle that we hear your heart and your sensuality and your love and your joy and your purpose. And it's not even in a word. It's in a giggle. <laughs> so can you do something that will kind of make him eye roll and giggle at the same time, but at the same time, he can't take his eyes off of you? But he's like, oh my gosh. But then he's like, this, this is why I love this woman. This woman's crazy. I love her. Can you have that kind of moment? Yeah. Yeah. So that's where you sit. Paulo Coelho, Paulo Coelho in his book, Manuscript Found in a Craw, says failure ends the second we enter back into a new and interesting battle. Hmm. And that's where you're at right now. The fact that you brought this up, the fact that yesterday you heard something to move you such that you brought it back up again today. You've entered back into the interesting battle. That, that phrase right there, Sean, that phrase, and I'm stopping you. I am interrupting you on there. Entering back into an interesting battle. That phrase right there is so... That's so important because when you're entering into an interesting battle, you lean in. When you're entering into a frustrating battle, you, you almost lay back and lay over and like, oh. but when it's interesting, when we're in a movie and it gets to a really interesting part and it sucked us in and they're in the battle, oh! an interesting battle. So then my question to you, Sean, is how do a lot or, or what does it look like to flip the script to create moments in our lives as interesting battles instead of frustrating situations? Well, we had two examples of it for, in Corinne and in LaToya. Yeah. Right? And... Well, the, yeah, but that's not losing a baby and that's not working on giving birth to a baby. It kind of is. It's the birth of an idea. It's the birth of an idea. It's a, it's a smile. It's a giggle from an amazing soul that says, I'm okay. Because in this dialogue, the, these are, this is heavy dialogue until it's not. Right. It's heavy dialogue until you giggle. And it's in that giggle that it's, it, yeah, it, it, no, the, the idea that you are not performing is, is not true because you are performing. You are doing the things that you desire to do towards an outcome. So I applaud you for having the courage to ask the question, to ask me the question. Now I, I, I it, and Danielle has started it. So I, I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the, the, the benefit on her, but this is how, this is, again, this is how we're all connected. 
Daniela had no idea yesterday that she triggered possibly a healing moment in you. Right. And then you gave her the gift of remembering how important Mateo is. So as you sit there, tell me, I, I felt an energy shift in your body. Was that your body I felt the shift in? Yeah, I mean, I'm, re I'm realizing that, you know, it's like Rhonda said, you know, if you f keep focusing on the outcome too much, then you're not enjoying the process and the fun that you're having. And I think that's important to focus on, you know, your partner and the stories that you're going to have with your girlfriends about, you know, um, the things that you've did and the where's and the how's and all of that other fun stuff. But also just at the same time, taking time for myself mm -hmm. and to let myself heal. Because when I thought I was okay before, maybe I was just putting, uh, no, I wasn't maybe, I was putting a Band-Aid over what was there. Yep. And I wasn't ready. I didn't think that yesterday's call when you said, you know, some mothers wish they were arguing with their kid in the back seat. Some people don't have that. And that just, uh, that hit hard and it, it really, uh, so here's a question. Is it okay for you to come home? Yeah. 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 And I, listen, Diane Sweeney was, was talking about it. And she put a comment <coughs> where she experienced that twice and has two children. I know Rhonda and her story and the scares and the fears and all of this stuff. She was sent home to die and all of the, I mean, literally all of these things, these emotions and, and then have, have the child and then not be able to be the mom. So there was all that fear. All of this, all of this is false evidence appearing real. We can only be in this moment. And it may seem crass. It may seem cold for me, for, for any guy to say, we need you in this moment. There's a joy that you have in this moment. There's an experience that only you have been through and you and I, I, I listen, the, the, only a mom who has been through what you've been through, only a, a woman who has been through what you've been through can even have this dialogue with you. And for the courage for you to be hurting for two years, to bring that up and say, there's, there's something I still need to address. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is, this is, this is the moment where you've let that go because letting it go doesn't mean it's gone. Hoping for something else takes you away from this moment. Yeah. Because the, the act of it will always be in this moment. The act of conception, the act of birth, the act of anything will only be in this moment. And in this moment, you get to, you get to decide the energy that flows through your body, misery or joy. And I, th I think, just hearing you speak now, I think you've paid your price. I think that time of, of you paying the price of feeling whatever the, the emotional state that you've, you go through and, and, and need to deal with, 
I think the part of paying the price of not being good enough, I think you've paid that price already. And I think today you, you cashed in that chip and you now get to stand owning the story as opposed to the story owning you. Maybe. I think you're right. I feel yeah. light. I don't feel, I don't feel the heaviness. And if the heaviness is gone, what's it replaced with? Joy. A lightness. So now the new story. So here's, so here, Alicia, I'll, I'll share this with you as because where you're stepping into is the new story is the you you've undeveloped a story that's no longer going necessarily to be told in the same energy in the same light is it quite possible that some people may not know they they won't say it but you've lost your mind uh-huh and is it okay if you lose your mind on this story? Not that you lose your memory of it, but lose your mind on it. Because in losing your mind, you now get to create, you get to stand in the frontier again and to look at all of the unending possibilities from the stories of where it happened, how it happened. I can't imagine I'm going to say this. Talking to your girlfriends. Yo, girls. <laughs> I believe you've, you've paid your price. I think so. The courage you have to bring, to, to bring this story to us, to let us experience this is unbelievable it's truly a, a miracle because there's there's somebody on here that this is absolutely sinking with in timing space and giving them a chance to to give themselves a second chance i wanted to say one other thing please as you are turning out of this this corner and back into joy I wanted to encourage you there there's how does that old saying go? Can't live with them. Can't live without them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know, that is, that's so true. And I, sorry guys, y'all just had to put up with another girl moment. Listen, go be your sensual self. Go be that amazing goddess that walks through the living room wearing whatever she needs to wear. And he's like, hold up, what? <laughs> <laughs> and go just, through the TikTok towel thing, whatever that is. Yeah. Well, just go, go use what God gave you and let him enjoy it too. And just be so, so present in that moment that you get to go, and that's the power I got right there as a woman. <laughs> and just go do it because that's what's so much fun. And that gets robbed from us. And you're turning into that now. Go enjoy your partner. Go enjoy what he has to offer and how he makes you feel. And go enjoy loving on him the way you know how and the only way you can. And, and have fun. But step into, step into that goddess that you are, girl. Step into that beautiful, amazing, sensual energy that you have. And have fun. I will. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Alicia, thank okay. you for, for, for trusting us. Thank you for being this amazing inspiration to all of us. 
it's yeah go go have some fun thank you all and that just happened sorry i hijacked your phone and talked about sex again. no hey listen <laughs> It's, it's it's I'm underage, you um you know. <laughs> hey, I might be you. underage too, but I'm sitting here going, it's ten forty two in the morning. 17. What time does he get yeah. off? What time I'll does he 17. get off? <laughs> I'll bring my earplug. You gotta remind me next time, Rhonda. <laughs> you know I'll give you a warning, Latoya. I'll warn yeah. you, Latoya, put your earplugs yeah. in. That's right. <laughs> Do a wave so that way I know. <laughs> okay. And put the this this adult conversations right, way out my league. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. But this, this but this is too much. much. <laughs> Here, here's the fun part of this: the ability, the ability to actually be able to have a conversation like this around the world. This is this isn't an isolated story. And this is the this is the exact reason. This is an extreme story of how something we tried to build something and it didn't work the way we wanted it to work. So this may be this may be a a a much larger version, a much more intense version of any goal we have. This is yeah, Jessica, this is true feelings. How many times, though, do we have these goals and, well, Sean, you can't compare childbirth to setting a goal in your business. I don't know that, I, that, that you can't. I don't know that, that it's any different. It's the intensity with which we, we operate in. And when we start to have fun in our business and when, when we have, start to have fun in our business, and we, can, we can go have some fun. If, if we wake up, listen, if we wake up and we believe that our thoughts can influence our day, is it not possible that our thoughts influence our day in everything? Y'all send Alicia some love in the chat, please. Just, and, if, and if that story inspired you, did something, find her an IG or wherever you can and just tell her how amazing her courage is and ladies you speak into each other in a way that i just circle around the top of the well it's i can't even begin to imagine the courage and the soul sisterness that is inside of that world but this is again i've reached certain levels in my network marketing business i've had certain things in in my life that have happened uh, but i've died almost i've died twice if you will all of these things to say that have happened in my life, I've held, I've held two people's lives in my hands who, who died in my arms, industrial accidents. I've had all of these things happen to me. And it's just like the military. I have so many friends in the military, but they can never say to me things that I would ever understand. We walk around not understanding my bride Standing, my, my son, who's 16, dealing with work and wear, having to wear a mask at work. I can't even begin to imagine these environments, but I can only imagine the way I am in this environment. And the best I can do is listen. As Covey would say in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, I can only listen with the intent to understand. Then I can be understood. Alicia came to us with a clearer understanding of her healing and now her joy. Pretty amazing conversations. Thank you, Alicia, again. Let's go to Shea Marie in Puerto Rico. Hi, everyone. Hello, Shea Marie. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, you guys pushed some buttons yesterday, for real, because <laughs> you triggered, you woke also something in me, and it was regarding my grandma. Aww. And I haven't talked to her in a while, and these feelings came up, and it was because I am angry at her. And I just realized it 
and she raised me like um so part of my story is that I always was in different places grandmas aunties uh other grandma other aunties because uh our parents divorced and if I was with mom I couldn't be complicated very complicated so my mom's mom my grandma uh she raised me but there was something that now that I'm grown and I'm self-developing myself uh I kind of uh I'm angry because she put this words this talking about, bad about her own daughter and all these anger inside and questions inside of me and all these negative stories that maybe did happen from her point of view about my parents' relationship and how I was raised and how I was questioned um, whose daughter was I really was and or how I was destined or people said that I was destined not to be uh, what I was, you know, what I am now, like you're destined failure or having a lot of kids and not growing, not having, you're not smart enough and all that stuff. And also was the grandma that told me, uh, you're too sweet with kids, so you're not going to be able to have one. And all this came up, and I don't know why that if those words that were put upon me, and I know that just words, I took them, not knowing, obviously, and now I know, and I'm like, how do I get rid of that? Because until this day, I did, I have been trying to have kids, and I, I don't. And that's okay, maybe I'm not ready, maybe it's God telling me, but I just realized that I am angry at her, and I don't want to be because she's still my grandma. And my mom tells me, have you called her? I'm like, no, I don't want none, none of that negative negativity. I can't change her, the way she thinks, but she does affect me because I love her. And yeah, that happened yesterday. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, I am. Yeah. Um, I, and you said yesterday, like, oh, you got to call her. And I'm like, shh, sounds crazy. Hasta luego. Me <laughs> calling her. <laughs> <laughs> she comes visit oh well you don't call her when you go visit i'm like i'm working you want to see me you call me and I'll, I'll i'll make the arrangements but it's and i guess it's because again i am mad at her sure and it makes me sad that i am mad at her but i don't want to be mad at her so ask this question to yourself which part of you is mad and which part of you is not mad i guess the the one that realized that she did all that in the past and maybe maybe angry but now that I'm developing myself I need to let go and you, you, when you said it just about like 10 minutes ago let go I feel like I need to let go that's what I need to do and so is it not your responsibility it's not your responsibility that she's the way she is it's your ability to respond the way you are to the way she is can you be the oh. observer can you be the one that checks the box and 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 keeps your mom from getting agitated and and keeps that part of you going the part of you that says she marie but no su abuela llame su, su, su abuela right and 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 you get to check the box and if you check the box that story doesn't run through your head 24 hours a day waiting waiting to be able to have a had to have a quick response when somebody goes did you call abuela no i didn't call she didn't call me this imagine if what would happen what would be the ripple effect all the way from Puerto Rico and then over to Vieques and then St. Croix and St. Thomas and all of that. What would be the ripple effect all down the Leeward Islands if you made the call today and said, no, I, I called grandma and I left a message. She didn't pick up. Everybody would be like, the world would stop. Well, uh, I don't know what to say to you now. Well, I'm glad you called. And it's like, that's all I get? That's so much better than, ay, pobrecita, po 
por favor. Right? So if you have the ability to respond, she is not your responsibility, but it is your responsibility, your ability to respond to how you choose to be. And what I take, I guess. Mm -hmm. Because this has been driving you for years. What if today was the day it stopped? What if today that it took on a whole new environment? It'll be great. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. A, a buddy of mine, John, says one robin doesn't mean it's spring. One phone call to your grandmother doesn't mean it's all over. You doing a couple of calls every now and then when you think about it. Does she text? Um, yeah. Okay. So what, 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 what do you think would happen if, if she saw a text from you? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I just came up with the idea of calling her FaceTime, like see yeah. her face and yeah. uh, just get it over with. Well, okay. So let's change that. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Through. Mango viejito. I'm thinking all of my Puerto Rican phrases. Just start with a text. Say, hey, listen, will you be around later? I'd love to FaceTime you. Dra get, get the best bang out of the buck. Okay. And then enjoy it. Enjoy it that you get to come back and tell us what happened. You can tell us how absolutely wonderful it was or how crazy she went or whatever it is, be the observer, right? Imagine you're a reporter for Radio Reloj. And yesterday <laughs> I, I had a conversation with this crazy lady and this is what happened. Or maybe she breaks down in tears and says, I've been, I, I, I've, maybe she apologized. I don't know, we don't know, but you're standing in the frontier right now and what's, what possible lays that way? Unlimited possibility. If you turn around and look back at the planes, what, what possibilities are there? Nothing other than what's been done. Exactly. You can't change it. But, and, but we can argue the hell out of it. Latina power, I mean. And it's just taking <laughs> over. And, and we keep moving into the frontier. We keep moving into the frontier, looking this way, going, oh, look at that. Oh, and then we look at something that happened just yesterday. Oh, well, see, the, she, she could have called me yesterday. What the hell? Turn around. And the thing is that I thought I had that, like, that was gone. Like, I didn't, I didn't even think about that until yesterday. I was like, Sean, <laughs> you do. About loco, gringo loco. <laughs> And I got to do it because you told me to. And I'm like, I, I need to speak to him before I call her because I want to do this right. And I'm angry. <laughs> Boy, for a place of love, I sure do get a lot of people agitated. <laughs> but so, Shay Marie, first of all, first of all, have you thought about even congratulating yourself for having this conversation? No, not at all. So uh, let's start there to make this easier. Because otherwise you're doing this out of spite. Like you just said, I'll FaceTime her and I'll get it over with. <laughs> let's start with you actually being the one who said, I want to fix this. Because I doubt your grandmother sitting where she's sitting going, I need to talk to my abuelita. I need to talk to my baby. She's probably not doing that. Yeah. So hats off to you. Applause for you for bringing this, that I agitated you enough <laughs> that you came to me and said, I, I'm, I'm a little frustrated with you because now I feel like I have to talk to my grandmother and nobody else in my family has been able to get me to do it for a hundred years. And, and <laughs> you in Dallas, Gringo Loco, has got me agitated to where I can't go. I got to, I, I thank you, Sean. I now have to call my grandmother. <laughs> exactly what it is. Exactly what you did. Yeah. 
<laughs> so here's where I change the way we look at things. I say thank you to you for getting agitated enough to, to want to do something. Listen, it's your first time. It might go wrong. Let's go back to Alicia and we'll talk about, you know, this is your first time talking to your grandmother. It could be like the first time you kissed a boy or did anything else. It could be horrible. <laughs> Maybe it will not be because I know she loves me. It's no, just it won't that be. She doesn't know what she did. It's that I know. Right. And, and again, so that's like saying the, 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 the snake that bites you well, and you can't get mad at the snake because that's all the snake could do. Dog bites. That's why I need to speak with you. <laughs> so, listen, I applaud you. I applaud you for letting this marinate for 24 hours and still having the courage to come talk to me because now this is a part of you that says enough is enough. Yeah. What's the phrase in, in, in ja? Ja. 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 Me hago pichar. No más. Ja. Ahora. Hoy es el día. Yes. And so sit there with who you are. Sit there with the joy that you made this decision. You're the bigger person because you're the one that's reaching out. Everybody's been telling you, do, 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 do. And you don't need one more person telling you to do, do. <laughs> but now you get to. Thank you, Sean, very much. Well, Gracias. A, a la orden. Me gusto está mío. So you're just amazing to do this. And, and I can't imagine. Be, so be, again, be the observer. And when you call and you start talking, it will be the perfect time. Because what will happen will be perfect. She could, listen, be prepared, be the observer. She could say, well, so why, was I, why am I so special today? Maybe, maybe not. But if you're, if you're a good business person, your ability is to be present enough to, to know that there's some situations that may show up that you didn't prepare for. But if she says, ah, well, well viernes, well, que pasa? Friday's a special day. Yeah, it's, it's granny day. Just be prepared. But, but it could just go the way you, does, you hope it goes, that she's excited, she's surprised, she gets to call her daughter, your mom, and your mom calls you going, you called your grandmother? Ay, gracias a Dios. She probably say, yeah, ahora. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you only talked for 10 minutes? What's the matter with you? <laughs> But see, here's the fun thing. You and I are giggling about it before it even starts. Uh, I'm, it's going to be okay. I just need to even let it go. Yeah, just start. Just start and then do it again and start and do it again and start and do it again because you need this as much as she needs this. Yes, thank you, thank you. Gracias, Gracias to everyone and for everyone speaking up and putting these things in me and putting Sean with ideas, guys. <laughs> Thank I you all. I love you all so much. Yeah, I will. <laughs> no <joke. laughs> This is so cool. How, we get to do this. Ugh, I love what we get to do. Hey, Brandon, let's go to Brandon. Hey, Sean, how's it going? Outstanding, brother. Um, great, that's great. Um, I wanted to come on the camera, but I'm actually driving right now. Okay, um, yeah, don't hopefully do that. you can hear me. Yep. Hear um, you <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I just really wanted to just um, share my gratitude to you. Towards you. Um, yesterday, I wanted to get on and say something, but it just didn't happen. Um, but I just wanted to thank you so much um, just for just this community and all that you're doing. Um, today, after my meditation, because um, I'm on meditation with Moshe, um, every morning, I just had so much gratitude and it was directed towards you. And then I just started to realize all the things and like all of the teaching that you've been teaching me and everybody on this call. And um, it, it just, it just, I just felt so much joy 
And um, I just wanted to just let you know how much I appreciate you because it's, it's, this is allowing me to just look at like my wife differently and just treat her even different, my, my daughter. And just, it's, it's just a lot of different things that in different ways that I'm looking at things. Instead of overthinking things, I'm more, I'm more of like stepping into the unknown and just um, realizing more of who I am. Um, and I just wanted to thank you. Um, and just keep an eye out today. I got a surprise for you. Um, just, just keep an eye out. And I just wanted to let you know that. And uh, much love to you and everybody on this call. So thank you. Thank you. Brandon, thank you, brother. I appreciate you. I love you tons. Uh, you, you give me the chance to be the amazing soul I am. Because otherwise I'd be talking to myself and they put people <laughs> away for doing that. So I appreciate you. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for hearing my words. I love you, brother. Love you too. Ah, listen, I don't know if you all get this, but this is a gift to me every day. It's it's my birthday every day with y'all. And I get to be here. And I get to have you all in my life. And you allow me to flow into yours and through yours. It's just, it's, as you experience this and as Corinne does her lives with Moshe and Moshe does his lives in meditation and Brandon flows in and Leo flows in and, and RC has these conversations and everybody is sharing with each other and Anne shares and Shami shares and Sheree shares and Diane types in the chats and she inspires people with her, with her written word and her smile on the call. And Shay Marie talks about wanting to talk to her grandma. We are all, we are all in this together. People who show up on the call and then aren't here and come back, they're still in it. They're still in it. RBP, what would be your rap, my love? And by the way, you know paybacks, right? <laughs> payback. Which payback are you talking about? For yeah. surprising for your birthday? We'll, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Ah! <clears throat> That's a whole different wrap up right there, brother. <laughs> um, I guess the wrap up that I would I would say and y'all probably just roll your eyes every time I say it, is flip the script. Flip the script on, oh, oh thought I was fixing to mess my seat there when I sat down the stairs. Flip the script on whenever it comes to you. <clears throat> when I do that, that's when I can either sit in the, the reporter's seat and just become the observer and it's also when I can yank my butt out of some negative thinking and back into joy when I flip the script. And every single time that helps. So that's, you did it with Shay Marie as well. And it's just flipping the script. So, you know, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy right, everything inside your head. Flip the script and take your take your territory back and claim joy and claim smiles and claim laughter and then go spread that to somebody else because when you're in service and you're loving people and you're helping people you'll forget about everything that's negative inside of your head most of the time not every time but most of the time and it'll put you in a place of servanthood and that's what we're designed to do and Ironically, that's where we end up getting everything we need is when we serve everybody else. And I'll warn you, I'll give you one warning. Don't serve to be served. Because when you serve to be served, then you'll get pissed off and you'll go, freaking, freaking Rhonda told me to go be nice to these people. And now these people screwed me over and they're not nice and they're not smiling and they're mean to me. And I can't believe Rhonda said that. No, that's not what I'm saying. Don't serve to be served. Serve to serve. So you can find another place to serve. And then you can find another place to serve. And then you can find another place to serve. And when those emotions of what the... Sit in joy for the service that you've just completed and that you're about to serve some more. 
So that's where y'all put me today. So thank you. And all my blackberry plants are done because y'all had me on such a high. Whoa! All my blackberry plants are trimmed and cut and repotted and all that kind of good stuff. So thanks for that too. I love y'all. I'm, I'm glad we can help you. I know. That's the thought. So selfish. <laughs> y'all, I love you so much. I appreciate you. I'm, I'm your one day a little bit older misfit, head misfit, Sean Murphy. I appreciate y'all. Love you tons. I'll see y'all where? At the next, At the next event. <laughs> I'll send some love to each other. Love, love you. Love you. Love everyone. Bye. Thank you for an amazing Bye. call. Thank yeah. you. Love you guys. Love you guys. Have an awesome day. Okay. Take care, Miss Vince. Go spread some magic. <laughs> <laughs> love you. Yay, that was good to hear Rob's voice. Bye. I know. Bye, Bye Rhonda. Hey, guys. Bye, Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye, Bye. Bye, 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 Sean. Bye, everybody. Have a wonderful Bye. day. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs>